Yes, it was, uh, it was about in 61, 1961, and I was doing a test. I was in bed with Lee Remick, not too bad a duty, and uh, Tony Richardson was directing this test. I got a telephone call from Kurt Frings, who was my agent at the time, and uh, they got me out of bed and uh, put on slippers and walked over to the telephone. We didn't have cellulars at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and Kurt wanted to know what I was doing. I said, well, I'm in bed with Lee Remick. You're supposed to be working. I said, well, that's what we're doing. We're doing a scene. And Tony Richardson is directing. Do you remember? And he said, yes. He said, but I'll tell you what you have to do. You've got to go home right now, pack your bag, and LAX, and you're going off to England right now, and then you'll be going to Ireland to do this film. I said, what film? I want to do this film. He says, no, this is um, um, Richard Burton's who he handled, couldn't do it, he was tied up in the Camelot. And so he said, uh, we're slipping you into this role. So don't even go home. <laughs> you can get your toothbrush, whatever you need, in London. So okay, uh, I'm running to the airport and I ran into Dick Clark and Dick Clark says, where are you going, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to catch an airplane. I'm gonna do a thing called The Mark. He said, The Mark? The novel? And I said, yeah, and he said, God. That's one hell of a story. Man, oh man, I've been trying to buy that novel. And I said, well, see you later, Dick. And caught the airplane, had no idea what the script was about or the story, didn't know anything about that. And uh, all the newspaper people there in England, in London, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the hotel they put me up at. It was right down Soho Square. and. Uh, I kicked everybody out of my room. I said, uh, you're asking me questions and I don't know how to answer these questions. I haven't read it. I don't know what I'm doing. And so uh, I read it and I said, oh God, I don't know if I can do this. I just don't know if I can do the handle this. Wow. So I went across the street and had my first beer in a London pub. <laughs> and I sprayed everybody. <laughs> Warm beer. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. <laughs> and so, at any rate, uh, I got a telephone call from Rod Steiger. We're in London still, just finished reading it. And he said, you want to come over to my place? And he was living in a little muse house. And, uh, and we'll kick a couple of scenes around. And I said, boy, that'd be a great idea. Because uh, uh, I was even thinking, well, OK, I'll get an attack or something, have to go home and not do this film. It, it got to be like that. And after working out a little bit with uh, Rod, we got to know each other pretty well. We had about uh, three, three days of that. And then we went over to Dublin. And I met Guy Green, who was directing it for the first time. I'd seen his work as a cinema photographer. He was one of the best around. And uh, a very, very reserved man. Uh, unlike anyone I'd ever met before. <laughs> and, and, uh, but I was so preoccupied in getting into this character and uh, working my scenes. We would work the scenes, Maria Schell, myself, Rod Steiger. We would work our scenes separate with, without the director until uh, until uh, we got on the set.